<laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> welcome, John Ramirez. Um, my name is Taylor. It is such an honor to have you here on the live stream today. I mean, I can't wait to get into this. Hey, man, I'm, I'm excited. I think it'll be awesome. And I think God's going to do something special for many today. Absolutely. Um, could you please open us up in prayer? Absolutely. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, my sister, now we just touch and agree with the Holy Spirit, Lord, that today will be an open heaven. People will receive revelation, clarity in their spirit. They will receive the word of the Lord. They will receive the testimony. They will receive that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. He is the Alpha, the Omega. He's the first and the last. And Father, we here, my sister and I, we here to lift up the name of Jesus, Lord. And we here to shame the devil in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. As I was praying and preparing for this, I just kept hearing the spirit of the Lord say that this live stream is going to bring destruction to the enemy's kingdom. And Man. I cannot wait to just hear your heart, your testimony. Um, before we get into it, um, I just kind of wanted to open up. I think there's a lot of new people here who maybe they don't know you or they don't know me. This might be their first time here. Um, and so welcome. My name is Taylor. Um, I'm from Nashville. And uh, on my channel, a lot of the things that we do is we we expose the new age, the, the hidden, the undercover witchcraft. Um, when I was in college, I started messing with um, things like crystals. I was an astrologer. I was doing divination while I was in church. I was being deceived. I was, you know, on the worship team. I was reading my Bible and I had no idea that I using crystals and manifesting and astrology and horoscopes. I had no idea. And I was a lukewarm Christian. I was in all of this sin. And then Jesus opened my eyes. Um, and so now I, I share a lot of that story um, with young people who now years later, it's kind of the same thing. There's so many young people that are reading tarot cards. They're, you know, they have crystals, they're manifesting, they're praying to the universe, and they think that they can believe in Jesus at the same time. Um, and so I'm really excited to really hear your testimony um, because the devil doesn't care. Witchcraft is witchcraft and the demons don't care. And they will come to steal, kill, and destroy. And I know there's a lot of people watching right now who they go to church, but they read tarot cards or they read their divination and they read astrology. And so I would love to hear your story, um, your testimony. And then, you know, maybe we can kind of get into those things of, of how the enemy works and the sneaky things that he uses uh, to get us involved in the occult. And we might not even know about it. And I, I think I think that the devil, one of his greatest tricks is dress up in, in culture, in fashion, and in style. And do it now. Get it now. Don't waste a moment. You know, this is your opportunity. This is a grand, uh, this is the, the, the pretty much uh, the offer of the century. And when, and when the Lord, uh, when, when the devil plagues you with those things, you know, you tend to make bad decisions. You tend to, to make permanent decisions on temporary situations. And my testimony is based on, uh, 25 years of witchcraft at the highest level. It, it, I, there's a level in witchcraft that is called the, the shadows of the demonic. And that's a level that very few people reaches on that level. The shadows of the demonic is a level that that, that you not only are projecting, cursing regions, uh, uh, atmospheres, taking over regions and atmospheres so you can curse people and put poverty, homosexual spirit, suicide spirit, oppression spirit. You put spirits of premature death spirits in that area. And uh, discord, division uh, in houses and homes. When you bring, when you ask your projects, uh, I was like a witch. I was a, a warlock for hire. People pay me. I did witchcraft on people, whether um, miscarriages or give people abortions. Uh, you know, by putting the demonic things in their mindsets and their thoughts. Uh, I did 25 years of witchcraft in the highest level. I got married in Halloween. That's a different story. That's a different, that's a different whole, uh, uh, let's say that's a whole different meeting on how Christians celebrate Halloween. They think that the Halloween is something that is uh, harmless. And I got married in Halloween. I had a demonic wedding on Halloween where witches and warlock came to baptize my wedding. Mediums came to baptize my wedding, uh, being demon possessed to bless my wedding with uh, what they call so-called uh, protective spirits, wow. uh, guarding angels to baptize my wedding. I mean, you got Anton LaVeyne, he was like the founder of Ch Church of Satan. He said, I wanna thank every Christian parent that you're allowed to celebrate Halloween, one, the devil one time out of the year, 
all your Christian parents allow your children to celebrate the devil one time out of the year. This is coming out from a man that, that he, a uh, satanic devil worshiper to the highest level, uh, thanking Christian parents for sacrificing your kids spiritually to the devil one time a year. So from the age of eight, I went up the ranks, uh, first of all, seven and a half, really. I got this necklace, came out the second heaven. It was called, the necklace is a seven demonic dark powers of the dark side. And I was in a little school. I was in a South Bronx kid, South Bronx, like East LA, Compton in that area. I grew up in that kind of environment and the necklace fell from the second heaven. Second heaven is ruled by principalities. So the seven dark demonic powers of the prince, the seven demonic principalities at the highest level dropped the necklace, fell at my feet. I was hanging out with the bully in the neighborhood and I figured I, I heard someone go Shoo! and it dropped on my feet. I looked at it, it glowed. I took it, I stuffed it in my pocket before he was able to take it off my hands. And then I heard my mom's voice saying, Johnny, Johnny, come home. And basically, my mom was about a mile away. You know, I don't care how Puerto Rican you are, you're not going to yell that loud. And <laughs> uh, it, it, for real. So so I heard that was a familiar spirit mimicking mm -hmm. my mom's voice. So I can run home and take the necklace and put it around my neck. And when I put the necklace around my neck, that was initiation from the second heaven. It's amazing how Paul, the apostle, got recruited from the third heaven when Jesus said, Paul, Paul, why you prosecute me? And, and he said, who are you, Lord? He got recruited from the third heaven. I got recruited from the second heaven in the witchcraft world. And from there, I went into a whole witch. I went into the whole level of the demonic, uh, into uh, demon church from at eight years old. I was, my first ceremony was at eight. My mom and my aunt, my aunt was a high ranked witch. She just passed away recently. She was a high ranked witch. She actually went, took my mom to a tarot card reading. And when I got there, the, the witch that was going to do the tarot card reading fixed her eyes on me. She didn't want to deal with my aunt. She didn't want to deal with my mom. And she fixed her eyes on me. And the devil used her to recruit me to my first ceremony at the age of eight. I went into the age of eight and I came out at the age of 35. And I, you know, married Halloween, witchcraft for hire, warlock going to clubs, looking for Christian, putting witchcraft on Christians, actually projecting Christian region, Christian neighborhood. I met Jesus, Jesus Christ in 1999 of October, came into my apartment. Uh, well, actually, he didn't, what happened was I was in my bed and I would say, I'm never serving you. When my mom used to get beat up, what were you? When we were hungry, you didn't feed us. When my, my dad was drunk and come home and abuse my mom, you didn't defend us. And, uh, and I remember at the age of seven and a half years old, I was at a schoolyard. There was this big, big celebration of a pastor preaching uh, the gospel and everybody was there and people were excited. And the pastor came off the stage and he started to pray for people. And I was like standing there and hoping that he'll pray for me. And when he got to my part, he got to me, he passed me by. And it broke my heart because I felt like, well, Jesus don't love me. And then the devil recruited me at the age of eight. And, uh, and I said, when I was at the schoolyard, you passed me by, you didn't love me. And uh, 25 years, and then in 1999, I sat on my bed, uh, depressed for the first time ever because the devil was pulling me one way, Jesus was pulling me the other. And I said, I never, I'll never serve you. I, I'm, my daddy's the devil, he's bigger than you. And if you bigger than the devil, you show me tonight or leave me alone. And I went to this, uh, I went to this sleep where I was passing away. When I passed away in my apartment, left my body, ended up in a train hellbound. And the train was going so fast. People in the train was like Times Square, rush hour, packed. And you can see the faces of the people, but they were tormented knowing they were going somewhere. They were never coming back. Wow. And when the train hit hell, I mean, it was an explosion. When they hit hell, when I step out of hell, I step on the ground. It was like, it was the, the, the ground in hell breathes like a person. Wow. It's like a human being, it breathes. And then the tormenting fear wraps around you like a straitjacket, python. And then when, wow. the, when it squeezes you, it torments you. So I was trying to find my way into like a window or door somewhere. How, how would I get out this place? How I ended up here? And then the devil showed up and the devil said to me, I'm just paraphrasing my whole testimony. Uh, uh, the devil showed up, he said, I loved you. You, I, 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 was, I was your father from the age of eight. My father was a warlock. My father died at 33 years old. He got shot and got killed instantly for a woman that wasn't even his when he had a good wife home. So the devil said, I replaced your dad. 
to make you uh, the next in command. Uh, why are you gonna leave me now? I show you all the secrets of my kingdom. I give you powers beyond any other witch, do witch doctor, witch warlock. I, I, you know, I loved you. I protected you. I gave you money. I provided for you. I, I, you know, and I was, I, I was confused. I was the devil was talking to me in demonic tongues, because we copy everything from the from the church. We spoke in demonic tongues. We lay hands in the demonic. Uh, we prophesy, which is demonic prophecy, by the way. We 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 fell back in the spirit. You know, the church people in the church fell back in the spirit. We fell back in demonic. We did everything y'all did. We copy everything to the T, uh, to everything you did. So the devil went to grab me, and the devil said to me, you're going to leave me. I got to kill you. I, you break my heart. I got to kill you because you'll tell the world about my secret, the occult, how I recruit humanity, how I pull, how I uh, control regions, and, and all the dark secrets of the dark side. I knew. that I knew the devil's playbook. They just paraphrase it. And when the devil went to grab me, the cross of Calvary showed up in hell. And mm -hmm. I mean, the cross of Calvary. So when he made contact with the cross, he fell like a piece of paper, like nothing. And then I ran into deeper into hell. And then it was, uh, when I ran deeper into hell, you can hear the noises and the ground breathing like a human person. And, uh, and as I went deeper, he showed up again, but this time he showed up with the horns. He showed up with his garments were filthy because he fell from grace. And, wow. he, and he had stains all over his body because he fell from grace. And then he said, I love you. I have to destroy you. Then I showed them the marks. I got marks here. I, I got marks here, marks in my back. When I sold my soul to the devil, they took a razor blade and they cut me open here, here, my back. I'll cross upside down. Mm -hmm. the, the, the demonic preacher, 17 warlocks came that night to sell their soul to the devil and all the marks on my body and on my feet, on my back, on my, uh, my calves. I got the cross upside down, cut into my flesh. I got over here. I had the 21 rolls to the dark side. I was the only one that took the initiation. The devil said, give it to him. He's going to be, he's going to be the highest of the highest vessel of the demonic. So they cut into my flesh, the 21 rolls of the dark side. Cause mm -hmm. the number 21 means serpent in the demonic world. So the number 21 is the highest number you can use to do witchcraft. And only the devil can give you permission to use that number. Cause if you use that number without the devil permission, you, you know, people go to your funeral, the devil will kill you. So that was caught into my flesh. So as he went to grab me the second time, the cross appeared and I knocked them. I mean, just, I mean, dropped them like a piece of paper. And mm -hmm. I went back into my body, like lightning bolts came into my body. Like I was in ICU and they were doing these electrical paddles on my body. And when I came back into my body that night in October, I gave my life to Jesus Christ in 1999 and never looked back. And I became from, from, I went to hell as a devil, demonic devil worshiper, 25 years. I did all the ceremony, all the rituals that a human being can do in the demonic side to all initiation, contracts with a territorial spirit, contract with familiar spirit, water spirit, marine spirits. I had contract with, uh, I had contract with divination spirits, fortune telling, all I had contact with every demon, second heaven, first heaven, territory spirit, demonic spirits from the cemetery, demonic spirits from the ocean, demonic spirits from the high mountains. I had contact with all these demons, ceremony, rituals, big bath, uh, cleansings, all this stuff I had from the age of eight to the age of 25. And uh, I, 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 as I went to, into hell as a devil worshiper, I came back as a believer in Jesus Christ. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. I, and that just proves no one is too far gone. There's no ritual. There's no covenant. There's no contract you can make with the enemy that is more powerful than Jesus. If, if Jesus wants you, he's going to get you. Um, and I want to, and I want to stop right there and ask you about contracts. Um, a lot of people think that when we make contracts with the dark side, it's this big ritual and it can be, but I want to ask you for everyone watching are, are getting your tarot cards, tarot card reading, or, you know, saying I'm a Virgo, I'm a Scorpio, I'm a Zodiac sign or, um, yoga poses. Are those things putting yourself in contracts with demons too? Well, yeah, you put definitely when you, when, when you, when you submit yourself, because it's a submission thing, right? And when you submit yourself to yoga, you submit yourself into horoscope. 
because it's a submission that you submit yourself. That means that I'm, I'm opening myself up to, to something in the demonic because when you do horoscope, that means that you're acceptable. You're putting yourself in a situation saying, devil, speak to me. Devil, I give you permission to, to take real estate off my life. So mm-hmm. when you go into these these things, uh, uh, Ouija boards, uh, when you do tarot cards, you know, first of all, the devil don't know the future. So I, later on, I can break it down, how the tarot, the secrets of the tarot card, how they work and how people get entrapped in those things. And when you give the devil permission, when you give the devil uh, legal rights, that's what really what the devil wants. You want legal rights over your life, over your mind, over your, your soul, over your thinking, over your thought, because he's trying to entrap you, because whatever he entrapped, whatever portals and gateways you open in the demand when you when when you're doing your humming you know you're inviting these spirits to come in because you're giving them the legal assets the legal rights that they're looking for and then you make a contract you know you're not selling your soul but you're making a contract on on the on the opportunity of saying you own part of me mm-hmm. that means you then now if you're a christian and you're doing that now you got mixture you never get god's best you're never going to get god's open heaven you're never going to, you're going to be a mediocre christian that you signed off for a premature death sentence over your life because whatever the devil owns he still can manipulate you and control you in the end he'll kill you he can't what to kill steal and destroy so the devil has that permission from your mouth from your actions that you give it to him and now he owns it yes a hundred percent um and and what you said it was something that actually happened in my testimony where I, I kind of mentioned I was an astrologer and at the deepest point, I was interpreting my natal charts. I was going in and it was divination and I was reading this chart and I'm a believer and I'm doing this and I was reading this chart and it said um, premature death. It said in my future that I was going to get a divorce. It said that I was going to have like brain tumors. It said all of this stuff. And that was the moment when I, my eyes were open. I said, this is premature death. This is sickness. This is disease. This is divorce. This doesn't come from God because some mm-hmm. people say God made the stars and the wise men followed a star and it's astrology. No. That's a whole different story with the wise men following the star. No. That was a direction that God gave them from a distance that had nothing to do with astrology. People say, Joe, oh, Jesus drank wine. So I'm going to drink wine. And, and people say, you know, well, the Israelite wore earrings. So they, they, they marked their battles with tattoos and I'm going to do the same thing. But you see, see, people people mindset are so in, in, in carnal let's put a carnal mindset bring danger in, in, into your life because you don't have a mind the mind of christ the bible says have the mind of christ renew your mind every day and then the devil is looking for a carnal mindset a carnal moment when you have a carnal moment the devil knows that he knows whether the worst proverbs eighteen twenty one, life and death lays in your tongue when you speak death when you stop believing the things that you're reading i mean like you said you know uh, premature death. You, you heard. You heard of marriage destruction. You heard these things. Now you tie yourself and you intertwine yourself into that because now it's believable, which is a false reality, by the way, a false reality to change your identity. Wow. That's what the devil uses. So in the witchcraft world, we have to use false realities to change your identity or who God called you to be. Wow. And now we own you because we got rights. Wow. I mean. That's and many lot. Christians are walking in that. Many Christians are walking in carnal Christianity. Carnal Christianity is you had given the devil legal rights. Whether whether yeah. you listen to worldly music, I what would the Bible speaks about? What would the Bible speaks about? Egg gate. What would the Bible speak? Mouth gate. What would the Bible speak? Eye gate. Mm-hmm. Because those are portals that the devil knows that he sees moments. You can't. I, I, I was ministering one time as a young Christian. I was ministering uh, to a. To a, a, a so-called Christian brother, he said, I go to clubs and I minister. I said, first of you, how you minister with the music is so loud? One. <laughs> and second of all, the, the music is filthy. It's going into your ear gate. And then what happened with the girls? They walk around half naked, your eye gate. Yeah. They're lusting over them. Well, you, you might be drinking Portland spring water, but you're still open, accessible to the devil because you're in the devil's camp. And now he owns you. Yeah. Sure enough, the guy backslid, never came to the Lord. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we can't put ourselves willingly put ourselves in those environments. And I kind of want to ask another question that's a little similar, but people sadly 
people need stuff broken down a lot. And, and when I explain these things, a lot of the pushback I get, this is a huge one. Um, Christians say, well, I do Christian yoga and I pray to God while I do the oh. servant pose. Yeah, but, but first, first, it, 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 it's like me saying, oh, I do Halloween, but I list, I love Halloween, but I dress up like little Noah. I do Halloween, but I dress up like Abraham. I do Halloween, but I dress up like Esther. It, 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 is, it, is, it is the contents of what the Halloween represents that you tie yourself to. Yeah. So, so, so if I tie myself to something demonic, even though I try to dress into like a Bible character, I'm still celebrating something that the devil owns. Mm-hmm. So even you put Christian music and you're doing, the, you're doing these, these, uh, these forms of your body uh, of Middle Eastern demonic demons, you still invited them in. The music don't mean nothing. The, mu- the Christian music don't mean nothing. You praying don't mean nothing because you already given the legal rights to say, I am in, in with this opportunity, this situation, this moment. I'm opening myself up to the contents of what that represents. Yeah. So it represents it represents evil. So you stepped into an evil spirit, spiritual realm or mm-hmm. atmosphere that the devil said, you can put any Christian music you want. Don't mean nothing because God is not in here. I am. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And I remember I, when I did, I did yoga for about a year back when I was in this deception and I would listen to Christian music and I would pray to God and I didn't think anything of it. And then years later, while I was getting deliverance, someone started calling out Hindu gods. They started calling out mm-hmm. and I manifested mm-hmm. and I said, and I, and the, and the devil came out, the devils came out and I was set free, praise God. And, and I was thinking, wow, I had to get deliverance bec- and I prayed to God and I, I was worshiping God while I was doing that. There's no way Christian. It's no- it Hindu demons, by the way, yep. because there's only one guy. His name is King Jesus It's demons, demons of all kind that they, they carry this small G because they're God of this world, but they're not the true God of the ones in heaven. So people get confused. Well, they, these are these are Hindu gods and these are Muhammad gods and these are gods from Islam and these are gods from New Age. You know, we serve, we, and they get to their mindset, well, we serve the same God. We just do it different ways. Yeah, no, no. I mean, how ridiculous that could be. I mean, they, people say, well, well, I pray to the universe and, and God's in me and I'm a God and the universe is, is God. And, and it's, it's so sad. Um, you know, how can God be the universe when he created the universe? How right, can exactly. he be the creation? But this is, this is, this is the false realities that make the devil makes the people feel good, make them feel comfortable, make them feel warm and fuzzy. And you think now you think that you are on some spiritual level and you think that, you know, you're religious now, you're a spiritual level. You know, you open up yourself to the universe. You pray to a tree like the tree is going to respond and, and give you a breakthrough. Uh, and the only thing the tree could give you is maybe an apple falls on your head. You know, you'll get a, a lump on your head. But the, 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 the truth be told, it, this is, but when you sit down and you read the word of God by the eyes of the Holy Spirit, you are so far away from God that it, that is it, it, it's sad, it's sad. It breaks my heart to see people. That's what the Bible says. You have a form of godliness, but you're denying the power. And, and I think people get caught up with this mystical uh, situation because it sounds good. It, 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 it makes sense to them. And, you know, and it's not faith. It's, it's, just, it's just human reasoning. You know, human reasoning is way different than faith. So to them, human reason sounds good. Like you hear people saying, oh, the man upstairs. Well, who's the man upstairs? You know, uh, is it the one in apartment 3F, the one in apartment 4F? Because the, the Jesus is not called the man upstairs, according to my, my Bible. Jesus is called the son of God. So, so we get into these cultural language that sounds good. That sounds pretty. It sounds reasonable, religious. It sounds spiritual. But there's no Jesus in it. The devil come as an angel of light. Yeah. And like you said, everything, the devil is a copycat. You know, they're, the prophecies, they try to copy it with a horoscope. They try to copy it with a tarot card and it's all false. And so um, I kind of want to ask you because, you know, you're so knowledgeable about spiritual warfare um, and, and everything going on. What do you see during this season, during this time? What is the devil up to? Like, what do you, where do you see him concentrating? Where do you see the enemy? And what do you, what do you see that the Lord is doing? And how can we play a part in what God is doing? Well, I think the church is dead. One, the church is dead. 
that's that's for sure. When COVID nineteen came, you know, we had that COVID nineteen preview of the mark of the beast. Wear the mask, you don't buy them. Take the shot, you don't go nowhere. It's pretty much a, a preview of the mark of the beast down the line. And uh, the church is dead. Now we got a kingdom. We got kingdom people. We got a remnant that God is preparing for the end time. You know, God is not looking for a nomination. God is not looking for a building. God is looking for people that the Jesus said, uh, he said, when I come back to the earth, but I find faith. So God's looking for faith people, people that fill faith, people filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the remnant. Those are the unknown. Those are the misfit that are sold out for Jesus Christ. They want nothing to do with the world. They want nothing to do with religion. They want nothing to do with the building. They want nothing to do with nomination. All they want to do is please the living God, the Holy One of Israel, the one that sits on the circuit of the sealed universe. That's Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of all. That's my story. I want to please him because at the end of my story, when I close my eyes, I make sure I made him proud that he picked me. So I'm not looking for a building. I'm not looking for nomination. And I'm not looking for religious stuff because I'm not, God didn't call me to be a Pharisee. God called me to be a vessel of honor for his glory. So if I stand right with heaven, I stand right here on the earth. Right. So so basically today, if you see the unfolding now, the, 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 it, there's a shifting of the guards that are happening today. The shifting of the guards is happening today. The remnant is rising up. The unknowns are rising up. The, the real, the true prophetic is rising up and the spiritual warfare is rising up and the deliverance ministry is rising. Up. I just I, just, I was in a meeting with uh, Daniel Adams, Isaiah, all these wonderful men of God. We had five thousand people showed up in, in Atlanta. 5,000 wow. people. I was casting out demons in the parking lot on my way home. I, I was casting it. out demons in the parking lot on my way home. So, 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 so God is on the move with the remnant that yeah. he is, he's producing, a, he producing a remnant that is not influencers. They're going to, they're the ones that's going to bear fruit for the kingdom and usher in his presence in the end times. So, you know, a lot of times we, we, we are, uh, caught, get caught up with influencers and gifts. And that's what we got out there today. Most of the pastors out there today, they're influencers. They lost, they lost the presence of God in their life. So now they're influencers. And now they're doing the work of the devil because the, 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 devil, the devil in heaven was an influencer. He was an influencer. That's how he was able to draw a third of the angel to fight against heaven. And today we have influences on the earth. You wow. see the politicians, what the politicians do when they want to vote, they bring the influencers in. Wow. Right? That's and then the church are influencers, but they don't have no fruit. The Bible said they will, the Bible say they will know you by what? By your fruits, right? So if you look at the today, the new age Tony Robbins speakers of the church today, right? Because these are new agers dressed up in Christian clothing. You see them speak, right? Eloquent, fancy, motivational, and people draw to that. Mm-hmm. Right? But those are influencers, no fruit. And then in the end, in Matthew 14, down the, down down towards the bottom, they said, we cast out devils, we, we did miracles, we prophesied. And Jesus said to them, get away from me. I never knew you because you thought your gift was bearing fruit and your fruit, was, you, you didn't bear no fruit because you did it for yourself. You didn't do it for me. Wow. You see? So today, God is raising up, a, 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 God is raising up an army of misfits. Like David had 400 on his cave. That is the devil don't have a clue what's coming his way. The devil, the devil don't have an idea. I mean, the devil's gonna be like a pinata in a Mexican party. He's gonna get a beat down from these unknowns that God is raising up. They're the fearless, untouchable, unmovable, unshakable. And that's what God is doing today on the earth. And today, the, the deliverance ministry is coming up to the forefront mm-hmm. today doing deliverance, dealing with the devil. Because a lot of churches talk about the devil, but they don't confront. That's right. Yeah. They talk about the devil, but they can't cast out a demon. They talk about the devil, but they can't break generational curses. I pray for people and, and, and to, for the glory of God. I could put this, I can have a, a, a link on my, on my website, testimony that will blow you away. I pray for people that have come to my meeting. Say, I got six, six, less than six months to live. I'm, I have four stage cancer. That's what they say. And I'm a Muslim. That's what they say. I'm Muslim and I got this and I'm dying. And I said to them, what have Muhammad done for you? Islam, nothing. The Lord, the, the doctor said, go home, make peace with my family because I'm going to die. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, my Jesus said, if you say yes to him, he can heal your body and you can go on living. Touch him, simple prayer, Lord, heal him and show him who you are. 
That's my prayer. Ain't nothing fancy. Be, it's the anointing, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the fire of God that deal with the devil and let the devil know what time it is. It's time the premature death steps off. And that's what I do in a lot of my meeting and people have been set free completely. They go back to the doctor, no trace of cancer. And they have come to my meetings and said, John, this is me, I'm free. I bring more people to church and my own pastor. Wow. Amen. And that's what, that's what I've been seeing too on, on my live streams. And, and we're going to actually, for everybody watching, you, you know, what's crazy. You know, what's crazy. I've been in meetings that the demon say to me, the demon said, we, I was in a meeting in Texas two weeks ago. I hate you. You left us. You quit. You're a traitor. Demons manifesting on people to profess to be Christian where they're Christian, but they're bound Christian, but they're oppressed Christian but they are depressed Christian, but filled with demons. And the demons say, I hate you. You left us. You was with us. Why did you leave us? Demons telling me that. There's no, there's no ministers out there, demons telling them that. And then I was in Arizona. I, the, the, this apostle went to cast out a demon. The, de the girl was practically floating on the air off the floor. The demon said to him, shut your mouth. You're weak. You can't do nothing here. That's the church of Jesus Christ. I came up and prayed. I was going to pray for the girl. You know what the demon said? I waited 20 years to fight you. I wanted 20 years to fight you. You know what I told the demon? Because I'm crazy. I said, you're more patient than Christians I know. So let's get it on. Let's get this out the way. One hour to cast out the demon from that young lady. I got videos and I got pictures to prove what I'm saying. And the crazy thing is people are still having the argument. Christians can't have demons. Oh, you can have whatever you want. You can have yeah. whatever you open up yourself. People say, I mean, you and I can't have a demon because we walk in genuine with the Lord. Understand, yeah. we, we're not compromising. You know, mm -hmm. if you're not, if you're, if you can't, I mean, no one is a perfect Christian, only God is perfect. But if you are a person that you per persevere and every day you get up in the morning and you receive the new mercy and you want to walk with God in a genuine way, then it's, a demon can oppress you, a demon can depress you, a demon can attack you. It could be a trial, it could be a tribulation, it could be a, a storm, it could be anything that God allowed to come to in your life. But a, a person that's living a double life that mm -hmm. out there, hanging out, doing the thing, and using the grace card to repent later, you can open yourself up to anything you want because the devil, one thing about the devil, he knows two things. The devil does two things. He's after your, 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 your patterns, of your, your blueprint, how you live your life, your blueprint, how you live your life, and the words you speak. The devil has a demon attached to your words, looking to see what kind of negative words, what kind of words you speak, what, what is it that he can entrap you by your words, the devil can entrap you and you have legal rights over your life. I hope that didn't go over people's heads because what you just said, John just gave you a key to the spiritual kingdom and how it works. The devil is waiting for you to curse your life curse yourself, speak all of that out. And, mm -hmm. and I pray that everyone listening, you keep that in your heart. You treasure that in your spirit and you watch what you say. Um, I want to ask, I want to ask you one more question. And then if, if you're cool with it, I would love to end in a time of prayer. We've got a lot of people asking in the chat. They're saying, I want to be set free tonight. I'm in this. I want to leave it. Can you pray for me? Um, oh, absolutely, man. You can tell the devil, love don't live here no more. You can tell the devil today, I'm giving you your eviction papers, you know, because we have, listen, the only religion in the planet that has power and authority over the devil is Christians. No right. other religion, no other cult, because everything else is in a cult. No other religion I don't care if you're Islam. I don't care if you're Muhammad. I don't care if you're Buddha. I don't care if you practice New Age. None of that stuff can rebuke, rebuke the devil. We are the only ones on this planet Earth that we can walk with the authority of heaven and the anointing of the Holy Spirit and let the devil know it's time for you to leave. I, you, and I'm going to renounce you and you're not going to be a squatter in my life anymore. Amen. Amen. Um, so, so this question... Um, what can you do if let's say you're married and your husband or your spouse, or then maybe in the kids, what can you do if, if your husband or your wife is um, trapped in these practices and you've been praying for them and believing for them, praying for them. Uh, and, and another kind of add on to that, why does the enemy hate marriage so much? And why does he want to break apart the homes and break apart? Well, the homes? Marriage represents the, the marriage represents the Lord and us. We married to the Lord represents a wedding it represents a, a, a covenant, right? So, so the devil knows that if he can destroy the husband, 
he can destroy the marriage because the husband is the head. It doesn't mean that he owns the marriage. It means it's just biblically, he's the head and the wife is the neck that turns the head. There's a unity, right? That's where they become one. So if I can separate, then everything falls down. So the devil knows that, you know, the marriage, God made covenant with the marriage, represents his marriage with, with the, the bride and, and the groom. It represents that. So the devil hates it. The devil hates it. So your marriage is under attack. And if you're not strong Christians, even to be a strong Christian, marriage are under attack. But if you touch and agree and come in unity together, you can command a blessing. And you can put 1,000 and put a, one, one, one will put 1,000 to flight and two will put 10,000. And the one, you see, people think that, well, my wife will put 1,000 to flight and I put 10,000. No, no, you and your wife will put 1,000 to flight. Jesus Christ will put the 10,000 to flight because you're in agreement with him. So because you see, God knows how to multiply. So God will put 10,000 devils to flight because he can do so, you know? And, uh, you know, that's why you, you saw the man in the tombs, right? Uh, the, the demon will try to intimidate Jesus. Listen, we 2,000 up in here. You came here with th th these three guys. They can't help you. And I, you, we 2,000 here. You sure you want some of this? And they was telling Jesus, intimidate him. So my name is Legion. That means it's a regiment. The name of the demon was in Legion. It was a regiment of 2,000, 4,000 in the Roman, from 2,000 to 6,000 in the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. So the demon was saying, "Where's two thousand in here? All you've been doing in whole your whole ministry, casting out one demon at a time. You can't deal with two thousand at one time." And Jesus said, "Let me show the world that I am the Son of God. And same way I can cast out one thousand, I can one hunt one demon. I can cast out two thousand in a heartbeat." And Jesus cast out two thousand demons. Two thousand pigs went down the hill, and they were gone. Even the demons said, "Don't take us out the region. Let us go into the pigs." Why? Because they were territory spirits. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. And, and what are some ways that the devil will put witchcraft on marriages? Can you, can you speak to that? Well, witchcraft is, is a, I, mean, I think the witch, you know, the way witchcraft comes into the marriage is basically it's not candles or chickens, killing chickens or going to the witch. Witchcraft comes into marriage because we have a manipulation spirit. The devil puts manipulation spirit in the marriage, right? So if I have a manipulation spirit in my marriage, right? Is what the Bible says, manipulation is a form of witchcraft. Now the devil has witchcraft on my marriage. And all he do, he all he do is gonna brave on it to make it real, make it a reality, right? Because if 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 if, if the person is manipulating the partner, right? The Bible says a, a form of manipulation brings witchcraft into your marriage, into your children, right? So we try to manipulate, and when you manipulate, you invite witchcraft into your home. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is so good. We've got a lot of people on here begging, begging you to pray for them, begging us. Well, we're going to pray. We're going to set it off tonight. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm just Jesus donkey that was tied up somewhere and Jesus go get them. Cause I know all, you know, and I don't say this to boast or brag or anything like that. I'm the least of two person to boast about anything. I'm the least of the person to say anything about anything. I just been grateful that Jesus knew my address in 1999. He came looking for me. And, uh, and today I've been following the Lord for 23 years. You know, one thing I want to share real quick, I've been bankrupt. I've been Ponzi scheme. I lost a house of $500,000. People did a scam on me. I lost 50, I lost $265,000 in a bank account from a lawsuit. I, I, I lost my car was repo. I lost all those things and I had nowhere to eat. I had nowhere to pay my rent, but I never left the table. Psalms 23, five got prepared a table in the presence of my enemies. And I still went and got on the train in New York City. I got on the bus and got to my places to go preach and never left the Lord, never got angry because I know that he was holding the pen of my story and he wasn't done with it yet. And today, nothing missing, nothing broken. And the devil knows my name. And the day I leave, I make Jesus Christ proud and hell will rejoice that I left the battlefield because I know spiritual warfare to the highest level to, de to destroy the works of the enemy, no matter what, he come, comes at you. The Lord has taught my hands to war. Wow. Amen. Amen. And before we go into our time of prayer, um, Evangelist Ramirez and I want to invite you. We're going to do an event in Nashville, Tennessee, January 20th. Yeah, I don't care if you pick a donkey, come down there. It's going to be on. Listen, yes. I tell you, it's going to be powerful. And I just want to say this. I know God is going to move in that place. We're going to destroy altars. We're going to destroy demonic forces, generational curses, bloodline curses, witchcraft. We invite witches to come and we give them front seats to see what kind of power you got. And I'll show you the power of Jesus. And man, we ain't not, we ain't hiding from nobody in Nashville. We're going to, uh, it's going to be an open heaven over the region. It's going to be a shifting, it's going to be a shifting of, of darkness to light. 
It's going to be people being set free. People are going to be healed, delivered, and set free because 2023 is going to be a year that you don't want to go in there. Think about it. You don't want to go in there with no luggage. You don't want to go in there with a mediocre Christianity. You don't want to be a chicken cook Christian. You don't want to be a pocketbook on Sunday. And you sure you don't want to be a Christian to all. You want to go in there and be a believer and say, Lord, I'm struggling. I got generational curses in my family. I got sickness in my family. I got, you know, it could be tormenting mental illness in your family. You could have a poverty spirit. You could have anything in your family. He said, Lord, I'm going to go to Nashville because I believe it. it's not a meeting of John Ramirez. It's meeting Jesus Christ. It's going to be there. He's going to set me free. Man, that, and I tell you, these, you know, one thing I shared, I shared this last thing with you. I can lose friends. I can lose money. Like I told you, I can lose a house. I can lose a car. got repo. I can lose a bank account. But I'm okay with that. Right? I mean, it hurts. But I'm okay with that. But one thing I can never lose in my life is God's moments over my life, his divine appointments over my life. And Nashville is a divine appointment for many people that are listening tonight. But you know what? You got to go the extra mile to sacrifice something to get God's attention. We got in this Christianity that we want everything in our doorstep. God is not overeat. You wow. know, God is not overeat. You know, bring it to my doorstep. You know, no sacrifice, nothing. You don't want to bring your alabaster box put it at his feet. You don't want to crack your alabox. You want convenience. You want to bring Ishmael. You don't want to give God your Isaac. God said, you come and bring the Isaac to Nashville and look what I do in your life. Amen. Amen. That's January 23rd, 2023, 6 p.m. at Plaza Mariachi in Nashville. We're going to have it. It's on John Ramirez's website. It's on my social media pages at Taylor Official. Follow John Ramirez Ministries on all of his platforms. You can follow me at Taylor Official. And John, can you please tell them about um, your e-course and your inner circle group? How you, how if you want to be discipled and, and trained by John Ramirez, you can actually do that. You know, my inner circle is my family, right? Because I'm, I'm going to share a quick a two, two second story. When I came to church, people didn't want to hang out with me. They didn't take me to fellowships. They didn't take me to go to some chicken wings or anything like that. I never got invited anywhere for almost a year and a half because they was afraid of me. They thought that I was still in witchcraft. The church rejected me. They didn't want to hang out with me. And when I was in the demonic world, I had such an amazing family. I would go out with, go clubbing, go drinking, go hanging out, go eat. And I lost all that. And I'm okay with that. That's all rubbish. But then when I came to the Lord, I didn't have a family. And, and today, the Lord has given me a family. It's called the Inner Circle. It just it's opened up on the 26th. It's going to close to, uh, January 1st because it's a, it's a place that I, I disciple believers. I disciple people how to do spiritual warfare because why get your deliverance if you can't maintain it? Why get an A in college if you can't maintain your A? Right. So I teach people how to stay strong, how to stay in the spirit, how to walk in the spirit. I teach people spiritual warfare in this in this uh, in the inner circle. I, I think you have the link there. And, and, and you know what? You know, I mean, and I pray for people. I answer emails. I sometimes I call people and pray with them on the phone. I got people from all over the world in my inner circle and, and I do Zoom meetings. I do mass deliverance. On, I do two, two mass deliverance a year. I do uh, I bring people that, that are real credible, solid believers that, that, that would teach the prophetic, that people would teach about spiritual warfare. I bring, I bring Isaiah. I bring people that are strong in the spirit to train you, equip you. Because, you know, in, in life, we have to be a balanced Christian, right? Mm -hmm. We have to be a balanced Christian. So I teach, I train, I equip, I mentor believers, and I, ask, I, I build them up in the faith for the battle to come so God can use them. So you could be an arrow in God's quiver when the time mm -hmm. comes. And that's what my inner circle is about. An awesome family. I mean, arm and dangerous, special odds, spiritual gangsters, spiritual warfare people. They know how to bring the fight to the enemy and how to stay free, right? Because why, why, why go and get deliverance? And if I can't maintain it, I can't keep it. Yeah. How Absolutely. do you keep your deliverance? How do you stay free? How, 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 you, how you see the devil on your blind spot, right? Because the devil comes on your blind spot. Every time he try to, every time the devil try to sucker punch you, I try to teach you what this sermon is like, how to use your discernment, how to use your anointing, how to use your calling, what is your purpose, what is your destiny, how to walk in it, how to live in it. And if you have a book to write, you have, I teach you how to, I've written, uh, I'm on my eighth book. I give you the, 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 the recipe, how to put the, the book together. I train, it's a lot of training, a lot of equipping. And it's very basic, it's $20 a month. I mean, you can go to Chick-fil-A for $20 a month. I mean, you can go to Chick-fil-A for $20 a month. It's a $20 a month um, thing that you do, but you get so much out of it and you become a very, very, very powerful and strong, transformed believer. 
Amen. Amen. And there's limited spots, right? It's, yeah, limited. It's, very, it's, very, it's very limited. It's open now. And then on December 31st, it closes. Then it won't open up for another five months down the line. Because I'm not, it's not about numbers. It's about people that really want to be trained and equipped. And the people that want to be armed and dangerous. And people that really want to walk in that freedom and that anointing. And then they, they want to walk in that revelation of who they are in Christ. Many believers don't know who they are in Christ. You ask believers, what is your call? What is your purpose? What is your destiny? I don't know. I don't know. And 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 and, and, you, and days are passing you by, weeks are passing you by, months are passing, years are passing you by. And when you're gonna go to heaven with an empty resume. Man, yeah, discipleship is key. So the link to his e-courses and the link uh, to uh, the inner circle will be posted underneath this video for anybody. And it's also on your website too. Amen, amen. And I wanna pray for people. I wanna, you know, we yeah. wanna give people a taste of what's going to happen in that show. Yes, yes, yes. So <laughs> um, let's open up this time of prayer. If you're watching this and you're serious, you're ready for Jesus. So we, we got five people on. How many people we got? Five All right. People? So we've got right now, <laughs> we've got uh, over 300 on TikTok. We've got a lot streaming in from Instagram. We've got YouTube. We've got Facebook. And then all of the people who are going to be watching replay. Um, so, I mean, there's hundreds of people watching. You might even have a thousand. I'm not sure. But um, oh, people God. are begging for freedom, begging Jesus for deliverance. And, and these are people that love Jesus Christ. They love the Lord. You know, they, they're not ashamed of the gospel. They love the Lord, but the pastors are not teaching sp spiritual warfare. Pastors, are, and thank God for the pastors that are waking up now, that are inviting uh, people like Daniel Adams, myself, Isaiah, you know, inviting Pagani, inviting wonderful Vlad from uh, generational, uh, I'm talking about hungry, uh, hungry, uh, he's yeah. Yeah, hungry. Yeah. He got amazing ministry up there. I was with him down in Atlanta, you know, inviting people in to really teach. We need to be taught. Listen, I love learning from you. I, you know, you learn from me. It, it takes a team to win championship. There's no threat about learning from each other. I think we should because iron sharpens iron. And the only person that gets shame here is the enemy. So I think I see these pastors trying to live the secluded life with they, with they, with their sheep. Don't go here. Don't go there. Don't get delivered. Don't believe in that. Just pray and grab it and grab it. You know, give me, give me. My name is Jimmy. The, the devil, that stuff don't work. You son, that's a son to Skiba. When yeah. the real fight go up, the devil's going to say, well, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know. Who are you? And I think that you need, we need to break out of that, that, that the religious thing and come into that place and walk in the spirit and, and do signs, miracles, and wonders. Because God is in the business of doing miracles, signs, and wonders. Yes. Amen. So if you're watching tonight, we're going to enter into this time of prayer. And if you're watching right now, you want to pray long. I want you to begin to renounce out of your mouth, yes. cut all of those things off of you renounce, you know, abortion. If you've had one, renounce any barrenness, sickness, diseases, sins, addictions out of your mouth, begin to renounce. And we're going to pray over you. And you're going to be amazed at how the Lord delivers and heals you tonight. Unforgiveness. You got to renounce unforgiveness. Someone molested you. Someone raped you. Someone uh, did you wrong. Let it go. Let it go. They can't go where you're going. God is taking you somewhere. They can't come with you. Let it go. Don't bring Lot with you. You know, don't bring Lot with you. Let it go. Complete any tormenting devils, every every mindset devils, every every demonic activity that you practice. If you practice Halloween, you practice Ouija board. You practice tower card. You practice horoscope. You practice like my sister was saying, New Age. You these these diabolical practices. The devil would dress it up. You know, people say, "Oh, I practice white magic." There ain't no white magic, man. The devil. You can't dress the devil up in a white suit and call it holy. It, it's the same devil. It's just dressed up in a different tuxedo. You need to renounce these things, whatever you said through your mouth, whatever death you spoke, whatever generation of curses in your friend, whatever sickness, whatever is tormenting your mind, whatever, what about demonic dreams that you're having or sexual dreams that you're having or any pornographic things that you're entertaining, any lust spirit, every perversion spirit. You, today is it's a day you say, devil, listen to me. I am renouncing. I'm cutting ties with this today. No longer are you going to use me. I'm not going to be a slave to whatever system you have in me. Jesus was born outside of the system. Jesus died outside of the system. I don't belong to the system. I'm going to break free today. So we announce right now in the name of Jesus, Father, I just pray for my brothers and sisters, Lord, you're not bound by space and time, Father God. Lord, the same way the woman that came up this coast, 
And she said, my daughter's vexed for the spirit. And Lord, you said, I don't give the children's bread to the dogs. And she said, I take the crumbs. So Father, today we take the crumbs in the name of Jesus Christ. Devil, listen to me. We put you on notice. We break every demonic attack of our brothers and sisters right now. Anything that they had tied themselves to, anything that had come in agreement, every, every demonic legal contract that they have, that they had made with you, but practices or words by mouth or mindsets. Father God, we break that thing right now. Any generation of curse it down to Adam and Eve. We break it off them today in the name of Jesus Christ. Devil, we put you on notice. That we give an eviction, know that we break every banks and scrolls. That means the legal rights, that means the, 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 the conditions, the terms that you made with this devil. We break it off you today in the name of in the spirit. We break it off you right now in the name of Jesus Christ from the crown of your head to your soul be free. Right now, Holy Spirit, breathe on my brothers and sisters, touch them now, wherever they're at, from the crown of the head to the sofa. You manifest now. You got to go now. Manifest in the name of Jesus. Come out in Jesus' name right now. You come out right now in the name of the same way you came in. You come out now. In the name of my brother, my brother and sisters hate you. They love Jesus Christ. They hate you. They hate what they're doing. They hate the practices. They hate the mindset. They hate the sickness in their body or the tormenting devils in their mind. Come out in Jesus' name. Oppression, depression, suicide. Right now, you come out. Any abortion devil that the devil is 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 tormenting you that you had an abortion or or you had a you had an abortion. Every demonic devil that has a hole on you has a grip on you. I break that grip. I break that hole off you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We set the fire of the Holy Spirit upon these devils. Father, I put the I put the judgments of God upon these tormentors in the name of Jesus. Let them show up and die. And Father, we release the anointing upon our brothers and sisters right now. Let the anointing hit them. Let the presence of God be right there with them right now. Let them be free in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Oh, you're your welcome, comment. my sister. Thank you for this platform and opportunity to come here and share the battlefield with you. Thank you. Thank you. And and just before you go, um, I just, from the bottom of my heart, um, I, I found your documentary, your testimony, your video on YouTube. I think I was probably 15 years old, almost, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, 10 years ago. And, and in youth group, and I would share it, I would send it to my friends and my pastors and I would send it, I was just amazed. And I have been following you ever since, since, you know, you started really releasing these books and doing that and, and now coming into ministry. And I just want to say, thank you for being a forerunner. Thank you for being one of the generals in the faith. You have taught me so much from reading your books. And now I'm able to hand that to the teenagers. A lot of them that I'm discipling, they find me on TikTok, reading your things, help me to leave the new age movement and leave the witchcraft behind. And so it's truly an honor to be sitting here with you and, and just, you know, you know, well, tear well, the enemy's well, camp and, and well, well, all, all Jesus and he gets the glory. And, and I, you know, these are divine appointment before the foundation of earth was put together. God knew that we were going to come together to get the devil migraine. Amen. And it's, right. it takes a team to win championship. And whatever you do over there, you know, every material, every stuff doesn't belong to me. It's all Holy Spirit it belongs to the kingdom. I just do what God, I'm, I'm the best secretary Jesus got. I just write stuff and I listen to what he has to say. And and it just gets put on paper and for other people to be set free and hold and deliver and live the life that God has for them. And, and when you come together, I come together. When we get to heaven, we get credit for it. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Well, thank you. God bless you, my sister. Can't wait to shake your hand in January. It's going to be on. It's going to be awesome. And uh, I know it's going to be a, a, a very, very powerful time there. So, so I invite people one more time. Listen, sometimes you have to stretch yourself. Sometimes you might have to sacrifice something to get there. But you know what? God's not going to disappoint you when you get there. God's going to show up. He's going to show up. And he's going to show down. And the devil's going to know what time it is. So praise the Lord. And uh, bless your show, my sister. Bless 2023 for you. And I'll see you there. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. All right. Bless